We can also do things like control the temperature right from our phone, turning on the mini split, turning off the mini split. From there, we kind of dove into like automating all the other things in the van. Our Monday through Friday looks probably pretty similar to what it used to look like, right? I mean, smaller quarters, but then on the weekends, we get to be somewhere new. We get to experience a new town, a new city. Hi, my name is Jason. And I'm Becca, and this is our tiny home wild. So this is our kitchen. This is our heat and AC for the whole space. Um, it kind of pops open and the heat and air comes right out. We can point the direction of the fan, all that good stuff. This is our EHV. It kind of circulates the air from inside with the outside air, um, eliminates the need for um, max air fans. Um, we've been really happy with that. It just kind of runs all the time and we're always getting new fresh air in here. Over here, uh, we have our cooktop. So if we just push on these two buttons, pull it down, we've got our, um, it's called a Heston Q, and we just kind of turn it up and turn it off and it works really well. Uh, we transitioned from two burners to one in this build and um, sometimes it's annoying, but for the most part, we really like it. Um, we keep our little pot holders back here and when we're done, we can just tuck it away and have the extra counter space, which is super helpful. Uh, we kept all of our spices and oil up on the wall there uh, just to keep things simple. This is our sink. Uh, we actually have this little mat that we can fold up, get rid of. It is really sturdy so when we're cooking I can chop vegetables and everything right on there, rinse things. It's really great. And then we've got running water. Um, one addition we added here was this little nozzle and so it's a, actually a mist sprayer I forget what it's called but that's allowed us to use only 20 gallons of water for an entire week um, we downgraded we used to have 32 plus some in the van that we had and so we we're really worried about downgrading water but with this mister we can wash dishes I can run it continually when I'm washing my face everything um, and not have to worry about turning the water on and off and um, it just really saves us a lot of water, which is important. This is our little mirror, the only mirror in the whole van. So, you know, not really great for dressing yourself, but it's great for, I mean, I use it for my skincare and all those good things, but it kind of slides out open just like a normal medicine cabinet would. Uh, so we get to keep all of our toiletries. Um, I've got a lot of skincare, vitamins, toothbrush, toothpaste, all that good stuff. Um, and then when we are done, we can just kind of slide it away and it stays really nice. Those are just actually two drawer slides that Jason put the wrong way um, and it works really well. This is a track system so we've got that on both sides here and we have the this table and then our towel rack has the matching track system. I don't know if that's what it's called but so we can actually run this anywhere along on either side and so that allows us to um, if I just press down here extend our counter and kind of use it um, however we need um, for any given time and this just closes. This is um, flips down it's just on normal hinges and we have well this is great it's right in our kitchen a little pea funnel so we use that occasionally more often than we'd like to admit <laughs> so here is our toilet so this door is again on those same hinges and then we just bend down and pull it out and you just heard the button. It has an automatic stir, so that's really nice. We used to have the Nature's Head composting toilet and so you'd have to like hand crank it um, when you're done. So this one has a little button, which is nice. So I accidentally pushed it. But one of the challenges with our build was that we had in this shell, there's two wheel well spots running the whole length of the camper. And so there was basically two spots to put anything that needed to be on the ground right here and then like right underneath the pass through. So we put it here and the one that we chose, the dimensions, it 
fit in this way, but like trying to use a toilet here is just not super easy. So we took a cue from like a Lazy Susan and that's what we have on it and we spin it around and open it up and that's our toilet. So it works pretty well and we just push it right back in and tuck it away when we're done. And then here we have our blender. So we make a lot of smoothies and when I'm cooking things, I, I like to use a blender. So we wanted to have it permanently plugged in somewhere that we can easily use and um, we don't have any like upper cabinets. So this was the solution we came up with. And again, it only fit in one way. So we used that Lazy Susan and spun it around. The camper came with this, I think it's called Arctic Turn Door. And it has this little container here. And I begged Jason to let me take it off because I think it looks bad, but it actually functions super well for all of our dog stuff. So all of Lulu's like treats, her leashes, all that good stuff gets to be tucked away somewhere and it works really nicely. And then right here next to our toilet is our shower access panel. We don't actually shower in here very often. We just like to have the option if we're somewhere where there isn't a Planet Fitness or um, somewhere that we can pay to go shower, we can shower in here. It's a bit of a setup, so it goes right here in the doorway and then the access panel here comes off and all of the valves for hot water and it's actually a recirculating shower. So all of that lives right here behind this panel. And then because we don't use it a lot, it just looks like the rest of our cabinetry the rest of the time. Well, I think it started with you, right? I mean, you were always the one that had that kind of need for adventure. You lived in a sailboat, you lived in your Jeep, and then the pandemic hit and um, he was living in his Jeep at that time and I was not about to <laughs> move into a Jeep. So that's kind of where the van started. We bought that, built that out and fell in love with it. So why? like why we do this, I mean, you can yeah. answer that. Yeah, I mean, there's the other part of it, like that's like why are we in a van or a you know, vehicle like this. Um, the other part of it is like, why are we on the road? And I think everyone's answer is probably different. For us, you know, we just want, we want to have something to look back on, you know, down the road when we're older that it's like, I'm glad we did that, even if it, it felt maybe a little silly at the time. I know a lot of our, our friends and family were like, you're gonna live in a van, like what? But, you know, we get to see a lot of things that a lot of people are never gonna see, or, you know, maybe won't see till they retire and, you know, those experiences are, are super cool. Yeah, and we, I mean, we work on the road, so it's really cool. I mean, our Monday through Friday looks probably pretty similar to what it used to look like, right? I mean, smaller quarters, but then on the weekends, we get to be somewhere new. We get to experience a new town, a new city. The dog loves it. Uh, she's really active. So um, we say we've gone on like a dog park tour of the US. Um. Oh, she's pooped in more states than any other dog. <laughs> And this is our storage. We built these kind of sliding tracks. So in our last build, we had a lot of the, you've seen them, um, like opening cabinets um, overhead. And we couldn't leave those open or kind of get at stuff. So it would be constantly like opening, closing, opening, closing, which was fine, but we really wanted to try something different. So Jason built these little track systems. So in each of these, they're actually like three, slot and groove things glued together and um, we got them powder coated black. And so then we use these metal panels that are super lightweight. And that was another big thing about this build is we had to keep the weight down because we're in an F-150 and it has the heavy payload package, but every single pound counts for us. So doing things this way and not building it out of wood really helped save us on weight. So all of these panels kind of slide open. So you'll see here, this is our pantry. We've got all sorts of organizers. I'm really, I like to keep everything kind of contained and it helps when we're driving around. We don't open this up and have things tumbling out at us. Um, so we've got pantry items, snacks. We even have a little air fryer in here, all of our coffee stuff. So all that good stuff is here. And then when we're done, we can just slide it closed. And then the middle one here is my clothes storage. So 
I probably tripled the size of my closet in this build versus the last build. A little secret too is that all of our throw pillows are stuffed with my sweatshirts and jackets. So I definitely have plenty of clothes on the road and love that aspect. Saves on laundry and such too. So we get to close that. And then over here is um, Jason's closet. He has a little bit smaller of a space. Um, we keep all of our router and all sorts of electrical stuff that I'm not even gonna bother trying to explain to you. And then just kind of keeping with this theme, we've got right here, this is our little temperature gauge. So our, like I mentioned before, our AC and heat comes out of there, but this is actually what reads the temperature. Um, so when we're gone, we can, you know, keep an eye on what the temperature is inside and adjust accordingly. And then this is our little home pod, so we can control everything from Hey Siri. So I can say, Hey Siri, turn the lights off and they'll turn off. So, um, Hey Siri, turn the lights on. <gasps> There it is. So everything that we operate, we can just tell Siri to do it. And then it's nice because we can play music and such in here. Um, and it's just always there and always on. Here also have a little camera in here. And so what that allows us to do is keep an eye on our dog when we're not here. So temperature regulation, and it's not so much a problem right now, but in the summers it can get really, really hot. And even if we're just running into the store, we like to make sure we can keep an eye on our dog. We also have two on the exterior just to keep an eye on what's going on outside while we're in here. So that comes in handy like at night if I hear a noise and say, hey, Jason, like, what is that? He can just look at the camera and see. So that's been helpful. And then this is our fridge. We searched and searched, and this is the only fridge that would fit in this space. But this fridge has been perfect for us. We have tons of condiment storage in the side, and then we even have a little bit of a freezer space. So that's been really, really great. And then to the left of the fridge we have um, we keep Lulu's food here and one thing you'll notice is we don't have any drawers which is kind of strange like for silverware and such but we actually just have a little knife block in here that all of our silverware is metal so it sticks right to it one thing for us is since we do both work on the road is having ample electronic storage and places to tuck our laptops away when we're not working but also keeping them charged so we just put these little drawers in here where we can organize our laptops, iPads, things like that. And then there's actually three plugs in here. So there's a lot in here. So everything can stay plugged in and charged all the time, which has been great. And then over here, this actually, this space is nice because um, it actually connects through to our garage space that we can access from a hatch on the outside. So if we ever did have things like skis or like we have inflatable paddle boards sometimes of the year. So all of that can kind of extend into this space and we can store longer things when we need to, but when we don't need to, you know, we don't have to. So we've got kind of just a miscellaneous storage here and then another drawer with all sorts of little random things that don't have a place. Um, we can just keep them there. Um, and then down here is where we keep our shower pan. And so this is just like a panel that covers it. And then the other one is just a panel with nothing behind it. So. In addition to like, you know, this being super insulated and like, you know, thermal bridging and lightweight and all those things, uh, one of the cool factors was that it's square, right? So anyone who's ever built a van out knows that like trying to like, I forget the word for it, but like trace those edges, right? Onto like a piece of plywood scribe. and like, yeah, scribe and you know, you cut it over and over and it's never perfect. Um, so this is square, which uh, was great because I could draw the whole thing in CAD before we, you know, cut a single piece of aluminum or, you know, anything like that, right? And so, like, we had it drawn, you know, down to the 16th of an inch um, exactly how we wanted it. We probably spent more time planning this build um, than we did the van, and so I'd say majority of the work on this one was done ahead of it, which was in that CAD, drawing it up. There was just a lot more limitations, I'd say, probably, just with the wheel wells the way they are, but in the van, it was a lot of, um, really tedious, uh, really intricate, crazy cuts, and you couldn't really plan ahead for a lot of that stuff. So 
Yeah, so in, in this, right, like like she mentioned the wheel wells, there's no, like this, this bench is here because there's a wheel well here. Um, and so there's nowhere to put all your heavy stuff where you normally put your water tanks on the floor and your batteries and, you know, your gray water tank. And like, we kind of had to get very creative about where we start all of that. Uh, especially because the floor of a, a truck camper is higher than the floor of a van. And so anything you put on the floor is already higher up like center of gravity wise. So you really don't want to go like up onto the walls and in wheel wells. Um, so we had to get very creative with where things are and weight was another big one. So like a van, you know, they're, they're meant to haul stuff. Uh, not that a truck isn't, but our particular truck is uh, a little bit more weight constrained than a van. So we had to be very like conscious. Uh, for example, like none of this is wood. This is all like a expanded PVC or, you know, aluminum composite, you know, panels. Like everything is lighter than wood because uh, wood would have, would have made us too heavy. This is the other half of our camper. This is kind of like our living area, bedroom, all those things kind of rolled into one. Uh, this is kind of where we hang out during the day when we're working. We have like a swivel table that we can move around. Um, if we want to have like dinner together, we can open it up and it's, you know, pretty large table, but most of the time we keep it closed, um, kind of out of the way. Um, right here we have our garbage that just kind of flips out. It's one of those things that folks often overlook. Next to the garbage under here is where our gray water tank is. There's not much to see there. It's just, you know, gray water tank. I guess looking over this way, we have, um, this is kind of like a false wall here. And so behind this false wall is where we store the extra panels that make up our bed. So we actually have a king size bed, which we'll get to, uh, because I'm tall, we couldn't you know, sleep sideways. But in order to do that, we had to kind of have some, some extra panels that uh, we can make the bed with. So those are just in here behind this. Um, and we kind of pull those out and make the bed every night and put it away every morning. Next to the bed storage, we have a little laundry chute. It's small, but you know, it's important to have somewhere to put your uh, your laundry, just kind of like the garbage. You need somewhere to put your, your stuff that otherwise would be in the way. So because our bed, you know, we have basically some aluminum things that go across here and, and that's what the bed sits on. Uh, we have a aluminum extrusion sort of frame on the wall there. Doesn't look super pretty. So we put this pegboard in front of it, kind of like make uh, use out of the space. Um, you can hang plants from it. We have kind of like our baby junk drawer right here. Um, so under here, we actually have a spot for our shoes. Uh, so this is kind of where we keep some of our extra shoes. One of the things about the truck camper is that we didn't want to rely on like fossil fuels for heat. So like the easiest way to sort of heat a place is with like a diesel heater or like an S bar or whatever. If you're plumbed into your gas tank or something, which is kind of the way to do it like that, you know, poses kind of a problem if you want to take the camper off the truck. So the entire thing is heated and cooled um, entirely with electricity using like the mini split that, you know, was in the kitchen. But cooling, especially heating, takes a lot of electricity. So we needed a big battery system um, and a lot of like electrical generation, aka solar. Uh, so underneath me, right in the middle, down low towards the front for center of gravity reasons is our battery bank and inverter and things like that. So we have 10 kilowatt hours of lithium. It's at 48 volts. So if you did the math and like pretended they were 12 volt batteries, that would be 800 amp hours, I believe. So we have 10 kilowatt hours of, of lithium, uh, you know, Victron inverter, all of the little Victron doodads. We, we use those in the past in the van and the, the Victron stuff just works. Um, plus you get the cool little dashboard where you can, you know, see how much electricity you're using, what you're bringing in from the sun, all those things. And you can even control some of it remotely, which is nice. We can also do things like control the temperature right from our phone, turning on the mini split, turning off the mini split. Um, and then, you know, from there, we kind of dove into like automating all the other things in the van, which required a little bit, you know, the cameras are off the shelf, uh, the, the mini split, you know, you can buy a, a thing that lets you control your AC from your phone, but everything else, right? Like the heated floors, those aren't that we had to build that, right? The water pump, those aren't smart, uh, off the shelf. And so there's a series of computers, little, uh, ESP 32s throughout the van. I think there's three of them and those computers connect to the Wi-Fi, which talks to our phone. And then when you hit a button on your phone, so for example, like I could hit the front light button. And what that does is it 
tells the computer to flip a relay on and the relay you know finishes the circuit for the front lights and then the, the outside front lights would turn on um, you hit the button again it, your phone tells the computer to tell the relay to shut off basically everything that we could automate with that we did um, so you know the water pumps uh, the heated floors all of the shower valves so the shower is a recirculating shower all of the valves there to like you know control the flow and back flush the filters all from your phone the air compressor the drains outside all of those things so I'm six foot four. I don't fit. I think, you know, this is 80 inches across. I don't fit sleeping across. So even though this looks like a nice, you know, double bed where you would sleep across, um, I don't fit there. So what we actually did is we have a, a California king bed. Um, essentially these pieces, you know, come up here and the bed is the long way. And so, you know, me, Becca and, and Lou, we all fit in bed uh, with, with room to spare. Um, sometimes I wish it was bigger than a, a California king, you know, when you get a dog in the bed with you, but it's uh, the most we could fit in the van. The other thing that I think we really wanted to add and, and was quite the you know feat to kind of get all to line up was this pass through here we actually have a hole that comes out or a panel that comes out and you can climb through this hole when you remove the cushion you can climb through this hole uh up into the truck and back uh it's uh interesting to watch someone do it but you know in an emergency someone's outside they're scary you know you can, you can climb up to the front and drive away Some of the benefits and the pros to to this sort of lifestyle would be we get to be in a new place every weekend so and wherever we want to be so if we like the weather in one place we're really digging the vibe of a certain city we can stay there longer if we want or we can move right along it's really up to us and there's nothing kind of you know we don't have reservations we don't have to make those ahead of time so it's a lot of just following what feels right and what works for us so that's definitely a pro yeah i mean we're from Wisconsin the Midwest so we grew up kind of one way and so we've been all the way on the West Coast we haven't really done much of the East Coast but getting to see the different areas and also like weather in different places has been really interesting like wind is such a thing in this in the desert and we don't have anything like that back in Wisconsin so you get to really experience different places the different people their like what they deal with day to day things that you you wouldn't necessarily know if you just took a vacation somewhere you're really like living there we love when there's like a chore to do or like uh you're stuck somewhere wait you know in a point like apple store right there's a long line or something you just go put your name in and then you come back to your house and you can just like hang out we miss that so much when we like didn't when we've road tripped or done really anything without our home with us like i can change my outfit whenever i want um like i do that four times a day just little things like that um yeah like snacks will be road tripping and it's like you don't have to pull over at a gas station you can just uh, more so in the van than this because we can't climb through but in the van it'd be what's a popcorn i'll go get it so um lots of pros i think yeah so things that aren't so great obviously small spaces are they can be tough. So like, they're great when it's cozy and it's raining outside and you have a candle on, but sometimes you just wanna like take more than one step without like running into a wall uh, and you can't um, without going outside. So sometimes that's not great. I think it's maybe not a con, but like uh, like being aware of like resources, right? Like running out of water, like, you know, I can't count how many times we've done the dishes with like a squirt of water and then some paper towel, right? Cause like you don't wanna run out of water. Or, you know, you don't wanna, uh, run out of electricity so like maybe you set the temperature a couple degrees colder than is like super comfortable or things like that aren't super great another thing that's like a little tough about living on the road is especially in like something like this like sometimes in a van you know you can fly under the radar depending on where you are uh, but like people know you're obviously living inside and so where you're allowed to be and where you're not allowed to be whether it's like officially allowed and you're like not breaking the rules or are but even just like you know you're not really supposed to be there or like the locals don't want you like you have to be aware of all those things and and sometimes it's a little uh stressful um like it wears on you over time it takes uh, a lot of time too like everything too. takes a grocery store trip takes twice as long for some reason even though we don't have to bring the groceries home like they're you just put them right inside the back of the truck but for some reason like everything takes at least double your gps says uh, 20 minutes it takes you 40 i don't know why 
<laughs> no. Just us. <laughs> So this is the outside of our rig. As we kind of talked about on the inside, this is our garage. So this is the exterior access to our garage. If we did want to have like skis or something like that, this would be kind of where we would get them in and out. So the garage connects right through into those cabinets on the inside. So you can put long things like skis in there, but we'd have to get rid of some of our junk first. So inside the garage, there's a couple things in here that are important. We have our water tank. So like I said, there's a 20 gallon water tank in there. Uh, this is where we come to fill it, you know, pull the hose out and, and fill up the tank from here. We have our ladder in here for getting up on the roof. So we have Starlink mounted up on the roof, flat mounted. You know, if we ever want to take it off and go set it up in a field somewhere because we're parked under trees, we need to get up on the roof. The other thing that, you know, it's kind of important to have in here is our air compressor. So we have an air compressor mounted up in here, which we can pull out and use to reinflate our tires after we go off road. So if we're driving down washboard for any extended period of time, we'll let the air out of our tires. And uh, it's important that you air your tires back up before you drive. The truck camper is sitting on the back of a 2022 F-150. It's just a regular cab with an eight foot bed. So it's an eight foot camper, eight foot bed. A lot of people wonder about the F-150 rather than you know a three quarter or a one ton truck. It is the F-150 with the heavy duty payload package. So we have about 3000 pounds of payload and the camper empty is about 800 pounds and we put all our stuff in it so we're you know right about at the right number there everything in the van uh, is electric you know i've said that a lot um, but because everything's electric we need to generate a lot of electricity so there is about 2200 watts of solar on the roof um, six panels in total uh, but if you if you look up there you know it's only obvious that there's three panels um, two in the front and one in the back so what we did is we actually layered the panels so we have uh, sort of two layers of of, I think they're 370 watt panels each. Um, so there's three on the bottom, three on the top, and they actually open and slide out. So, you know, the panels slide out and then we have all 2200 watts in the sun. We've seen at most, I think about 2150. So, you know, 2150 watts coming in, but you know, you have to keep in mind the panels are flat and you only get you don't get full efficiency when your panels are mounted flat. So there's a set of drawer slides on each of the panels, like just like you would use for, I don't know if you had a 40 inch drawer in your house. And then there is a 40 inch actuator, a uh, linear actuator for each panel. And so those actuators are hooked up to the relays and you can control them from your phone, just like everything else in the van. Uh, but the actuator, you know, it's electric, it, it goes in and out. The framing itself is aluminum extrusion tied into the solar panel. So, you know, we use the upper layer of solar panels to sort of build the frame. And the aluminum extrusion is only in place where it absolutely needs to be in order to save on weight. So one of the reasons we got a truck, so we could go off road, you know, get to the places that other people sometimes can't. Uh, and as a part of that, you know, you're driving down back roads at night. So we mounted some lights up front and actually in the back as well for those, those spooky times when you let the dog out at night. But those lights on the front are uh, just controlled via your phone. Um, so you're driving down the road, you know, you can't see, you flip those on and it really opens up your, your field of view there. There's a lot of remote jobs now, so you don't necessarily have to give up your career to go on the road. If you're a definition of a career as a, a traditional nine to five, like you can still do that and, and you know also see the country, which is cool. Yeah, I mean, I was someone who very afraid. I, I didn't even know if I could do it for a, a while. Everyone that I talked to before coming on the road was like, you're doing what? I just, it wasn't really me, I guess, in that, in that sense. So I think if, you feel like you'd be giving up too many comforts or you know anything like that. The, the amount that you gain from it versus the amount you give up is so worth it. And you know, set, set a timeline too, right? Like you don't have to do it forever. You can do it for a bit and then see how you like it. Um, you could start small. Like you don't have to do these crazy builds from, yeah, from the get go. Right? Use your SUV and make sure you hit like the road. it first. And you know, maybe you'll fall in love with skiing, hiking. I mean, I've, st I've started all new activities just because I live in a van that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. So it really just pushes you out of your comfort zone and it's hard being away from family, things like that. But I think just trying it in some capacity to start with and then figuring out yeah like how to work on the road if you don't want to give up your career or give it up I think the real just, piece of advice is like no one really knows what they're doing so just like try and do something and like 
the other people out there like you know look around like it looks like we know what we're doing but like we're still kind of figuring stuff out so just like go for it and <laughs> thanks for coming along on the uh, tour of our tiny house if you want to follow along with our journey and um, we try to post some helpful tips about um, some of the unique features we've built um, on our Instagram at decide the wild um, it's decide the YLD um, that's the name of our uh, tiny home as well um, or you can find us at decide the wild uh, decide the wild hope to see you out there <laughs>